Welcome to the first sermon in our new series, A Fashion Makeover for the Soul. Fashion dictates how we choose to clothe ourselves, whether it's trendy or timeless. But the Apostle Paul wrote in Ephesians chapter 4 about the fashion of the soul, what we should throw out from our closets, and what we should add to it. In this first sermon, we look at the classic tale of the Emperor's new clothes to illustrate how, without Christ, our souls can never be finely clothed. Open your Bible to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 21, and let's begin. O Lord, you are clothed in majesty and splendor. Strength and glory surround you, and we worship you in awe. Please show us our need to put off our old, immature, and flawed self, and to put on a new, maturing, and noble self. Teach us to recognize and be aware of the ugly soul issues that ruin our lives and instruct us to follow Christ's example of a soul set free from ineptness so we can live healthy and influential lives. Bless the children this afternoon and grant us safety and joy at the summer extravaganza. All this I pray through hope in Christ. Amen. Many years ago, there was an emperor who insisted on having the best of everything. And uh, so when a a tailor came through town, uh, who let it be known that he was the uh, greatest tailor in the world, the emperor invited him to come to the palace, and and, uh, they agreed that this tailor would make him the most... um, royal robes that had ever been made. And uh, the emperor gave him special rooms in the palace, and the uh, tailor uh, brought in his looms and um, started making the material. But when the emperor checked in on him, um, He was a bit baffled because uh, he couldn't see anything, but the tailor said, you mean you can't see how finely woven this cloth is? There must be something wrong with you. And uh, the emperor checked again, and um, he... uh, uh, again, he had trouble, and he said, you mean you can't see how fashionable uh, these clothes are? You know, I'm beginning to wonder about you. And so the, uh, uh, the emperor goes, oh, yeah, I can see it now. Yes, it is beautiful. And the big day came for um, the special celebration at the palace, and um, the uh, tailor brought uh, uh, the clothes in, and uh, uh, even though the emperor couldn't uh, really see them, uh, he, he let the tailor help him uh, like he was getting all dressed, and uh, then uh, he marched out into the uh, 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 audience. Everybody was instantly shocked, but no one said anything until finally a little boy said, the emperor is naked. And the spell was broken, and the emperor hustled out of view. It's called the emperor's new clothes. And if you're like me, you read it to your kids more times than you care to remember. What's the point of the story? The point of the story is, often our character flaws are easier for other people to see than for us to see. Often, listen, often we expose the ugliness of our soul far more than we are aware of. And because God loves us and wants what's best for us, He says, I don't want you tramping around with the ugly showing. 
In Ephesians chapter 4, beginning at verse 20, the scriptures say, But that's not the way you learned Christ, assuming that you've heard about him and were taught in him as the truth is in Jesus. To put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires. And to be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to put on a new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. You see, if I could say this in modern terms, I would say God wants to help us have a fashion makeover for our souls. We've clothed our souls in uh, flaws that don't work. Except somehow or another, we keep saying to ourselves, I'm all right. We're dressed in the old, sweatpants and a sequin jacket. We're dressed in the old, a um, Hawaiian shirt and snow pants. Somehow or another, everybody around us know it, knows it isn't working, but we deceive ourselves that we're all right. And Paul is asking us to do a moment of heart check and just say, would you challenge what you have heard about what a fashionable soul really is? Sometimes popular wisdom about a fashionable soul is just wrong. Tabloid images are put out there for us to say, aren't these people worthy of notice? And most of these tabloid images are uh, tragic souls that have uh, 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 suffered from self-inflicted addictions and are at the pinnacle of uh, self-destruction, and we splash them all over tabloid images, and, and somehow or another, we're supposed to look at these people and go, wouldn't it be great to be them? No, it wouldn't be great to them. They're flawed and broken souls. And they're no model for anyone. What about uh, the rock and roll image I grew up with? Um, that if you really make the big time, you're a rock and roller and your whole stinking life is out of control. Break up hotel rooms, crash cars. Uh, smash millions of dollars worth of equipment on the stage. Hey, church, that's no model for a healthy soul. My mother taught me not to break things up when I was in elementary school. How about the, the sports image? This gets plastered all over our culture. If you really make the big time, you're a sports image like this. And many of these sports images are nothing more than the, uh, uh, the poster child for uh, the flawed character of entitlement. I'm entitled. Because I can play basketball, I can put a shotgun in a guitar case, shove two pistols in my belt and boot, and go uh, uh, speeding down the highway uh, uh, because I'm, I'm a sports figure. Uh, because I'm a sports figure, I can take advantage of, of uh, college girls in, in bars because, hey, I'm a sports figure. What about the Wall Street image, where everybody is judged by how many zeros there are at the end of their salary? Doesn't matter who you are, doesn't matter what your character's like, doesn't matter the quality of life you're living, if you have enough zeros behind your salary, well, you must be special. How about the trendy bar image? You can see them downtown Cleveland. They go there and they're all styling. They all have done something that is so trendy that they hope it'll set them apart from the rest of the geeks that are there. <laughs> 